um, that aren't necessarily situational or on hit. Uh, and you just want to, and, and then I, I like to mix that with some speed uh, because because I'm addicted to speed. I gotta go fast. Um, but really, because you're you're tapping, you're kind of tabbing in and out of, you know, you're hot swapping between a pushing team and a gold find team. You kind of want to go through the areas as quickly as possible, right? So I like to I like to hot swap into. If I'm filling in extra slots, I like to have a speed champion. So uh, slot six, uh, Shandy, right? Like just drop Shandy in and and go go go, like the Brimstone Angels. Um, Hey, Lydia. I got to wear and get Dragon Beat. Nice. Should I hold off using Electrums with him? No. Save Electrums for your event champions. So champions that come out of an event or a time gate. For Dragon Bait, Dragon Bait's an evergreen. You just use regular silvers. If you have if, if you have about like, you know, the, the silvers that you loot, make sure you have 25 or more. Like if you can get 25 or more looted. Otherwise, just buy them one at a time to get him to green. And then you do the gold chest to get him beyond that. Regular golds. You don't, you know, you don't want to use the electrums. Electrums are a waste on any evergreen champion. Okay, where are we going? 425. We're going to... Oh, yeah, I guess we're going to do... Double mediums again. You're welcome, Rafflin. You're welcome. Again, I, I haven't done a deep dive into that, so that's just off the top of my head what I remember from these champions. Obviously, I need to look at certainty again. Hold on, I'm going to actually do that right now. Um... Certainty is gold find based off Ack Inc. and C Team members in the party, based off their level. So every time you uh, put a level into them, you get a 1% gold boost, stacking additively. And champions can contribute up to a, over a thousand levels after their last available upgrade. So she's more like if you're doing a, an Ack Inc. party. With, with Omen in your party, like if you had Omen and the certainty she she might be okay but you i mean you're talking you're wanting to over level both of them uh you know so she's ack ink based that's probably why i kind of forgot about her because it's really it's really built around hey are you running an ack ink party time to make a lot of gold because that's what the drones do right But yeah, Dob and Penelope are both. Dob more has to be in early so that he can he can uh, uh, deposit your investments regularly, right? Um, whereas Penelope technically could be added. You would want it if you were going to test comparing them. You would start with Dob, and you would run to wherever your wall is, uh, where you're going to be dirty farming. Uh, and then you would, then you would probably then take the time to manually stack Penelope up to a, th a place that you think is a, is a viable number or, you know, that you might normally get to. Like if you're paying attention to what your Penelope gets to normally on a deep push, if it's like 200,000, then you can go manually stack her to 200,000 and then compare her to Dob, right? She can actually be built up later. Dob can't be. What's the Dark Urge ability that helps Astarian? It isn't one. It's an Astarian ability. <laughs> this is the thing. Dark Urge doesn't count towards age-based things, but generational wealth is age-based. And it's the total age of all champions in the formation. But there's a kicker at the end. If the Dark Urge is in the formation, 
he doubles the effect of the ability. So right now I've got an, a total age of 1,044. Uh, now let's say I lose 44 of those levels by taking one person out and swapping in the Dark Urge. The Dark Urge then counts as if he were a 1,000. That's huge, right? That's huge. Uh, so this is it's something to keep in mind when you're testing the things out. Like, and 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 almost if you're using a Starian, if there's people who are close in gold find, you want the one with the that's older, right? You want the one that's older because it's going to contribute more stacks and it's going to boost this number up more. But it's just it's just a secondary feature of generational wealth that they added. Because they were like, oh god, we put in a champion that doesn't work with Astarian at all. And so they added that to Astarian. Because the Dark Urge specifically says, I don't work with speed effects. Or I don't work with age effects. Few times with Penelope, I closed the game in the morning when it opened. She was fully stacked up. That's fantastic. I've never gotten her to full stacks. Yeah, I've never done that, but that sounds great. It's nice to know that it's somehow it's working in the background. Penelope maxed in about twenty minutes. Oh, that's efficient. I haven't again. I haven't tried. It's a lot of like manual manipulation. It feels like of boss levels. Because I just let it run and see see whatever happens. And just accept it. Yeah, break. That was the that was the worst Dave voice I've done yet. Oh, well. I do my I did this one right. Uh, we are on Adventure 14. Adventure 14. Six left after this. So many niches in this game. I play it so poorly. Look, if you're if you're playing it and you're having fun and you're progressing and and then cool, then you're playing it right. Um, it's just there are there are ways to just really be hyper efficient about stuff. You don't have to be. You don't have to be. Um, but you know, for some people that, that makes the game more enjoyable, you know, and if you run into places which you're like, man, I just can't seem to progress. Like maybe you need to look up something that's going to be a little, maybe a little more efficient, a little something to help you just a little something, something, uh, to get you past whatever's stalling you out. And maybe you then pick that thing up and do it all the time. There isn't a rhino dude, but there is a there is a hippo dude. <laughs> Commodore Crux. 
Commodore Crux. He's our GIF, and that's the, they're hippo folks. They're hippo folks. Rhino dudes would be, would be pretty cool. Well, the problem, they, they'd all be bards, right? Because we all know bards are horny. I mean, come on. It's, it's a bard joke, folks. It's a bard joke. A rhino is just a realistic unicorn. I mean, I feel like rhinos and unicorns are, are the same species. It's just one. It, it's 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 just one of them. It's like dark elves and and the high elves. That's that's the difference. The unicorn is the high elf version, and the the hippo is the or the rhino is the dark elf version. Same thing. Like it's just different skin colors, and it's like well, you know, rhinos just don't. They're just like, look, I am what I am. Stop it. I don't need to be all tiny like that. Let's go. And then narwhals are just it's the same thing, but they're like, it's like they they, they hooked up with a, a fish, some kind of fish at some point, and now, you know, now they're, they're part, now they're part fish, part unicorn slash rhino. Yeah, that's where the unicorns actually went, folks. At once upon a time, there were unicorns, and they just all went swimming and decided not to stop. That's... Well, I, you know, nar yeah, they, they whale. You don't know, when are they going to meet a, how are they going to meet a whale? How are they going to hook up with a whale? I don't know. Some kind of sea, aquatic uh, creature there. Is that general enough? I've seen the last unicorn. The last unicorn is a lie. That is, that is false advertisement. I did not see that when I was young. I watched that uh, after hearing Jason Charles Miller sing uh, The Last Unicorn repeatedly. He does a cover of that. It's great. And so I sat down once and I was like, I'm just going to watch this. And I sat down one night and I watched The Last Unicorn and live tweeted live tweeted uh, my thoughts and yeah it's I can get people of you know nostalgia and everything whatever it was not a great movie <laughs> it was not a great movie Point in the game where I finished all of the split the parties and have my first time gate open, starting to decide what to prioritize is something not so limited. Yeah, um, so if you've got all of your speed champions, I mean, speed champions are the first priority, filling out like a, a gem farm. Whatever type of gem farm do you want? Do you want a, a regular gem farm or do you want a briv gem farm? Uh, after that, you want pushing champions uh, for for your tri for trials in Mount Tiamat. Would be then the next priority and then after that is gold find champions so in priority i think in general in the game speed pushing gold find and of course at times you can always bounce around the gold find and the pushing a little bit if you need to if you find one is lacking um but usually there's enough good combo champions like a starian who is both a pushing champion and a gold find champion uh that you're going to get there right and then once you have those teams built out, like you've got your you've got your speed team, you've got your pushing team, and you've got your dirty goal farm team, then it's just got to catch them all, just to go full Pokemon, right? The priority after that is usually patrons. What do you need to flesh out your patron variants, like, so make that easier? Then you make a meme team. Well, I mean, isn't that just Artemis? Wait. Uh... <laughs> Hmm. 
I feel like meme teams are in the game when you've got nothing else, nothing better to do. Yeah, so if you're having if you're having problems in Strong's area, I'll see if there's any strong champions that can be used in both. Target one of them. See if that helps. If, see if that's all you needed. Uh, or if you need to get another one or something. But yeah, after those three kind of primary groups, patrons are, are kind of where you're aiming. Because the thing is, even if you kind of stall out on patron progress and you've done everything else, you got a gem farming team and you got your trials team and that's going to get you a lot of progression until you until you unlock more champions to help you to go back to the patron stuff, right? Ooh, five, there we go, 1501. I was like, five gems away, he better drop them. He better drop them. All right, new pity timer. Who it is? Potion of speed. Uh, potion of speed. Excellent. Two out of three ain't bad. We meet low for that one, folks. That'll get us another. That'll get us into it through another adventure without having to use our hour-long potions. We've still got six more to go. So that should help us get through the Sibriax. And then we've got how many? We got four. That'll get us all the way to the end. And then the last one we wouldn't have a speed potion for. So hopefully somewhere in the next five, we loot another large speed potion or a bunch of mediums <laughs> or a bunch of mediums. I'm really glad we didn't uh, try to save up. Um, for for the next familiar, because this would be the just the slowest progression through here, and I would it would be killing. Me. What? 
progress is okay at the moment. We need to move this up. And throw it in. We got 12 minutes left and we're a little over halfway through. We might end up okay. I think it's going to run out right towards the end here. Um, yeah, I have Armored Juniper. I mean, that's... I'm grateful we got Armored Juniper. It was a bit more of a grind than I had hoped for. But... Uh, yeah. I don't think I would have lived through... <laughs> I would have been fine. Uh, I just would not have enjoyed trying to get to 50k. Because we were out... Of, we, had been, we were out of speed potions for a little while there. And it's still don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. Oh, you know what I want to do? Let's <laughs> pipe out my core to get automation, folks. We unlocked automation. Now, here's the thing. Uh, do I have, like, a quad? I do. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. We're automated. To the glorious crowns. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm so happy <laughs> to finally have an automated speed core. Okay. Um, this is filter. Uh, I don't really care about uh, super high numbers here. We're just hooking everything up. And, uh, Okay, so about 300% all chance damage, 20% more gold fine, double damage on con and int of 1300. That's fine. Uh, what's four gonna give us? Four is gonna give us more gold find and more damage. Most importantly, it's gonna open up a bunch of space up here. So if we wanted to try to boost flow, we, we could to these to try to get more gold or more damage. Uh, and then five is the is the big deal. Five is going to get us this uh, enemy spawn speed boost, which alongside Whittle is going to be just like zip, 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 zip. Uh, I'm just glad to have automation again. This means when I when we shut down at night for the overnight farms, I can load in the core and it can get, you know, a thousand XP or more. So upset I couldn't see totals and really you can hover the output. Yeah. That's how you see the total here. Um, is is the output. Is the, the well the input node, your starting node, you hover over it and it shows all of your active outputs. Uh, so it show, and it's also where you learn that these, you know, go together uh, multiplicatively. Yeah, to be clear, the speed core doesn't get you speed until uh, upgrade level 5, 10, and 15. And they're different functions. So 5 is the enemy spawn speed, I think. Is 10 the game speed? Yes, 10 is game speed. Like a potion and like shandy, so we get another multiplier here. Uh, and then 15 is extra credit on quest stuff. Unfortunately, it's only a max of like 50% extra credit. I wish it maxed at 100%. I wish it guaranteed you extra credit. Uh, but it doesn't. Yeah, I I find that uh, that my fast core, like even even when it was just an epic flow fast core, had had near the same damage as modest. Uh, but I could go, you know, faster. Uh, if I w if I fell just short of completing something like, you know, 
and I need a little more power, I could throw in the modest core at 15 and full epic, and, and it would get me a little further, but it wasn't like an outrageous amount. That's where the deeper push is, you know, it's like a dexterous core, or the unaffiliated core, uh, strong core for car lock. Like there, you know, there are the, the specific hyper focused ones that can get you a lot more damage. But most of the time on my main account, I only ever do a supercharged fast core. And that's my priority here. I'm now that I've, I've I've just been working to level this up since I got it, and this has always been sitting in a background. So now, I mean, all my focus is here. And at night, at night, this has been getting, you know, a thousand uh, or more XP a day, uh, whereas this is getting nothing at night. Whereas now, this is going to be getting all that experience at night. So it should catch up and surpass fairly quickly that modest core. Getting unaffiliated core completely maxed out has allowed me to make some real gains in the last month or so. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. It's got a lot of damage. And the unaffiliated and the dexterous core are the two cores that you can fully supercharge. They're the only two ones, I believe, still, uh, that you can fully supercharge. Uh, and their damage outputs are up there. So, But again, it's either you have to have an unaffiliated DPS or a... Uh, and, and a lot of your party helps if a lot of your party's an affiliate as well. Uh, and then the dexterous is just high dex. Right? Yeah, Jam, that's why I got. Um, that's why I flexed Nordum was to set him in a background party. Unfortunately, he doesn't work in all the patrons. And he really wants. I need another familiar. He can't kill on his own. He's he can't clear the waves. It ends up stopping progress. Um, so I either have to, I either need another familiar, uh, so I can have another champion in there, or just to, another familiar so I can park on clip damage. Either way, I need another familiar to really get the most out of Nordum in a background party, and then he's not going to work with some patrons, which is fine. But yeah, if you park him in in your background party, because you're because now you've got Diana, she's way better for leveling your core than Nordum is in your active party. Um, you run Diana in your active party, you're just gonna get levels faster. How are we doing in progress? Four minutes, and we're at. 340 and we're gonna run out of speed. We're we gonna run out of damage though. I don't know. We haven't gotten any small speed potions to help. Small speed potion. Dang it. Medium speed potion. I'll take it. I'll take it. I asked for a small, it gave me a medium. Next time I'm going to ask for a large. <laughs> uh, Looking forward to the eventual revamp of Trials and Legendaries. I'm sure it's a long ways off still. It is. Uh, I just get really protective of my favorite. I don't like spending it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's... If you're up above, if you've converted above what you can earn, then it's... Then legendaries are problematic, right? If you haven't, then it's super easy. Because you just do a forge run, where you just do a super deep favor push... Uh, at the end of that favor push before you leave, then you level up your legendaries. And when you leave, you've got all that favor and it took you, 
equal to or greater than where you were before, and it's like you never spent any in the first place. Um, but we're looking at, uh, I think they've said in the latest Dev Insights that the Trials rework is now the bottom of the to-do list. So that means like next year at best, probably. Probably. Mr. what you said about Diana being better than Norton. Morlin Wist, so when it comes to leveling up your Modron core, you gain XP based off uh, completing an area, right? Every time you complete an area, you gain XP. Nordum uh, at low item levels, which is what most people have a Nordum at, gives a very small, like a fraction of one XP, right? Every time you complete an area. Um, so it can actually be better to have a speed champion in instead of Nordum. Di you used to, I used to run speed champions and Nordum uh, because that was the that was at the time the best of both worlds. But Diana is a huge speed champion. Speeding up that transition effect is a is a big deal. Um, and depending on if you're at a low item level Nordum, Diana is going to be way better for you uh, because you're going to you're going to complete an area quick, get to the next area even quicker than normal, complete that area, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your overall run and the overall cycle that you're doing is going to earn you more Modron XP than having Nordum in. Now, if you've heavily invested in your Nordum, you're going to have to run tests to see which is better. Um, like a capped Diana or whatever your Nordum is at. Like, I'm sure Emote is like, I'm still going to throw Nordum in because <laughs> their Nordum is through the roof on item levels. But, you know, it's it's going to be a little dependent on item levels. But uh, but for most people, Diana is a, and any speed champion in, in a full, would be better in a formation than Nordum. Got favor in the 80s, but I can't really earn more than mid 60s in a deep run. Okay, so yeah, you convert it up. Eventually, though, with enough legendary, like it, you know, investing in your legendaries is going to earn that back, right? Um, so at a certain point, you're going to, like, investing in your legendaries is going to let you push deeper to get that into the 80s. But I don't know where I don't know where that trade off is, right? Hey, Dice Goblin. It's like on my main account, I think I'm. There's some places where I think I'm in the E90s in favor now. Well, I know I can get. I think it's somewhere between the E70s and E90s. It kind of depends on the formation layout of the campaign. Um, except for obviously Turn of Fortune's Wheel. Turn of Fortune's Wheel, I'm in the E40s, but that's from conversions. I mean, that's how it's going to work, right? You do deep runs, you level up your 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 legendaries, uh, doing that forge run stuff, and you're and then you'll be able to go further, but then but then your gains are going to stop because then you need to level up your legendaries again. Like you just got to keep you got to keep leveling up the legendary effects uh, as you get more scales uh, to be able to go deeper. So the, the question is, is like, do you want to take a short term hit for long term gain? Right. Do you want to take those favors that are in the 80s, drop them down into the mid 60s to make your pushing teams better and continue and give yourself the ability to continue building up? Because if you ignore it, it's just it's un untapped potential, right? in those from those campaigns from any items that are linked to those campaigns 
There's given enough, you know, if you just, but if you just keep spending and keep upgrading, you're going to get there. You're going to get back there and beyond. No, Whittle, why'd you hit me? Feel the Whittle betrayed. Oh, it's because you're not Whittle. You're a doppelganger. Oh, no. E107 favorite of Ernest? Wow. Oh, from Hav the Great Wall of Havolutius? Yeah. Oh, getting level 3000? Wow, that was a hell of a bug. I only got to like 2050 with my Great Wall of Havolutius back in the day. 3000's wild. But that gives us a good that gives us a good estimate. I was wondering, like, I wonder how much you favor you would get to. If they raise the, the hard cap on area progression to 3,000, well, obviously it's in the E100s, right? The low E100s. It's good to know. Because you kind of need, you know, if you want to get your uh, legendaries to level 20, when when you get to the point where you're worried about getting them all the way to 20, which I am not, uh, you need a minimum E100 favor just to be able to push the button, which means you need E101 to level it up once. You got the badge on Kent, so did I, but yeah, but it's at 2050. The last time I thought the legendaries capped at 10, they should have. <laughs> they should have. Um, I think I think CNE wishes that they had capped them at 10. In the same way, I think they had just originally capped Briv at 4, John. Or just made Briv not jump bosses ever, which is the same as effectively as capping it at 4, John. Well, it's not even actually, it's not even good at 4, John. Yeah. Almost done. No, Lucille. Stay away. Stay away, Lucille. I don't know. 